What's your real name, Shug? I don't even tell my customers that. Why should I tell you? Don't tell me that. Quinn, I suppose. Even lovelier. What do they call you? Can't remember. Make it cricket. Yeah, them boys out of Texas know a lot more about cowhide than they do about a woman's. Where are you from, Q? It doesn't matter. It's my gift to you. Obliged. New Orleans. Amarillo, El Paso, Tombstone. You may have seen more of these territories than I have. Well, they can keep them territories. Got any smoke on you? Ain't proper for a young gal like yourself to be poisoning you. Either you give it to me or I start scratching around on the floorboards for a soggy little dove. Obliged. Hey, my plan may be poor, but I'm not entirely sure that's necessary. Found it under my bed. I suppose a little friend in your garter could be a blessing. Don't play that. Oh, I like this tune. Well, I don't. Stop playing. I gotta play something. You looking to play it with the harp? I think I told you to stop. I ain't them boys, Miss Q. I ain't never even been to Texas. I suppose a gun this small would be enough to put me down? You think it'd kill me outright, or would I have to bleed to death? So much tardiness coming from such a lovely place. This how you like your women, Piano Mary? Everything looks much lovelier when the sun comes up. Or at least less ugly. This territory can be punishing. But you strike me as a especially stubborn. Survivors are stubborn. I knew a survivor like you once. She was the meanest, stubbornest, most savagely beautiful hellfire and brimstone spitting she devil to ever spread hateful blood in the same boards you're staining now. You offer me a bedtime story. Thought you had a date with a derringer. Some years ago, the brass on that bar wasn't quite so tarnished. And the flies and them whiskey bottles still hit. Wait. You told the story before. I reckon I have. And that's the way you start it? And that's the way it starts. Ain't you gonna give it a name? Any good story's gotta have a name. <clears throat> the tale of Cassidy Red, a ballad of love and hate. you think and call me that? Why don't you use my real name while you're at it? Well, maybe I should have just called you Ginger. Did you even bother reading my letter? I gave you specific instructions, Rowena. I thought you wanted to be invisible. 
visible like water, not molasses. Well, they don't serve either in this place. He's gonna be here any minute. He's not coming in here until I says so. What'd you tell him? Don't you worry. I told him exactly what he needed to hear. And he'll definitely be here? What did I say? I need a brush. Give me the belt. You have to be joking. Where are you gonna hide holsters in a corset? Give me the belt. Look, I'm just gonna drop them the minute he closes the door. And make a goddamn racket doing it. Well, that sure as hell ain't no missionary costume. Anybody washed this thing since Holly died in it? You ready? I'll take that as a yes. It's past. Too drunk to put his boots off. Left him passed out in my bed. You want to get Davian out? Pass him out? Mm, let him sit off for a few. When he wakes, he might not remember he already paid me. <laughs> Whiskey me, honey? You'll be back. You give her the twice over. I don't want to go up there and get a switchblade in between the rooms. Don't you trust me, darling? You got something for me, Curtin? It's a Saturday. Has been all day. Will be for a few hours more. I mean, this isn't uh, Monday the day. You can't expect me to cancel my plans and come all the way across the street to settle something that could have been sorted on Saturday evening, can you? You gotta give me some time to get my affairs in order. I can give you an hour to get your affairs in order. How about that? My rudeness. Though I must admit, I'm selfishly hoping I might catch you in a moment of impropriety. I just want you to know how happy I am to have you with us. See, I pride myself on being a good host, so. Any girls that join us here in a professional capacity, well, I like to welcome them, personally. I like to think of myself as the royal food taster, risking harm to my person so as to shelter our customers from any potential poison in the product. Now, there's no need to sequester yourself in the shadows. <laughs> if an egotist like Rowena admits to a new hire being attractive, well, then it certainly is not a matter of opinion. So come on out here. Let's have a look at you. Well, if it isn't Miss Josephine Cassidy. Make peace with your God, Tom. For what crime do I owe this death sentence, hmm? Loving you? 
How about killing an innocent man? Doesn't a dying man deserve one last smoke, Cass? How'd you do it? How'd I do what? How'd you kill him? You've got exactly five seconds to unburden yourself and confess to me how you killed Jacob. Or I could just leave it a mystery and splatter your brains all over the wall. Who told you I killed him? Five. Oh, your trustworthy old pal, Rowena. Four. Scrupulous to a fault, that one. I mean, when was the last time a hooker lied to get something they wanted? Three. Who says Jacob is dead? Or maybe she told you exactly what you needed to hear to get you come back. Back to this town. Back to me. You're lying. Am I? I am so happy that you are home, Cass. We all are. Aren't we, boys? Come on. Joe Cassidy? Of course you do. Who could forget a prickly pear like her? I like your new hair, darling. It softens your face. <laughs> I am sorry. If I hurt you, Joe, but you hurt me first. Matter of fact, you shattered my heart into jagged shards and then sprinkled in pieces all over that campfire. If you have any heart still left to beat, I aim to silence it for good. <laughs> That's my girl. Staunch to the last. <laughs> Let's find this heartbreaker a soft place to lay down them fiery locks, shall we, boys? <laughs> and how did you think this was going to end, exactly? It fits a lot better than that ring you lost interest in so quickly. <laughs> Ain't neither of you long for this world. Enjoy your last night together. Let me guess, they share some poison berries that Jacob had holstered just in case this ever happened. Not everyone in every story is quite as hung up on martyrdom as you are. Since I don't know what that word means, I'm gonna go ahead and take it as a compliment. They say that when lovers are pulled apart by fate and circumstance, their bond is only strengthened as if the heart responds to challenge with resolve. You an authority on love, Cricket? May I continue? Josephine Cassidy was conceived and delivered in that room right there. Daughter of Harley O'Houlihan, one of the founding members of Bellevue's most profitable enterprise, and Court Cassidy. Part-time killer, full-time drinker. 
A young girl who grows up in a saloon sees and hears things no child should ever have to. But when Harley went to work, she'd banish her daughter from the bell for days at a time. Joe would light out for Court's ranch half the day's ride south of Ruby. Often as always, Rowena would come along. She was the product of the barkeep taking liberties with one of Harley's gals, a pretty young thing named Jill who died giving birth. Nobody in Ruby paid Rowena no never mind, so she followed Joe back and forth across that desert, looked up to her like a sister. Besides the occasional meal, Court only really had one thing to offer his daughter. After all, even when half in the bag, he was still a sinister shot. Back in them days, a hired trigger like Court Cassidy could wipe entire families with patch off their land, spill them orphans into the desert. One of them orphans wandered for months through open country till he made the mistake of squatting on the wrong property. Hey. <laughs> what you got there? You're trespassing on my father's land. And that tree you're digging in belongs to us. So whatever you have there is now our property. Hand it over. You hear me, Cochise? I said hand it over. Give it to me! Hey! Oh. Tom Hayes, you're a bully and a thief. just a jackass, you know? A donkey. A burro. Do you talk? I'm not gonna take it, you silly redskin. I just wanna see it. You better light out of here. Tommy's gonna be back with his daddy soon, and then you've really had it. He knows where you hide that thing now. Can't very well leave it behind. It'll be gone by morning. Come on, then. Come on! That jackass will never look in here. He's scared of snakes. Ha! I knew you could understand me. What's in there that's so damn important anyway? Yaki silver. The missionaries teach you to talk? Y'all scalp them afterward. What the hell is this for? I think that's the most wonderful, horrible sound I've ever heard. What's it say? Yazi. Yazi. What's that, your tribe? No. That's your name? No. Yazi. That's your family? It's your family's name? Yes. Well, it's your name. Everybody knows all the best names come out of this silly book. That's where my name comes from. See? 
Guess my folks were expecting a boy. What, you like that name? You can't be Jacob. Jacob is Joseph's daddy, and I already got me a daddy, see? That's Court, but there's Harley. Your family? My folks. Not much of a family. Fine, you could be Jacob, but at least be this. Otherwise, it's just weird. I've been wearing this for way too long. You wear it. Sucks. Ain't gonna hurt you. Look, I got one too. Some saguaros really let you know if you get too close. Got any more scars, Jacob Yazi? Don't worry, he won't come out here. He's more scared of them rattlers than you are. This might be the ugliest goddamn thing I've ever seen. A local prospector by the name of Hank Hayes amassed a small fortune when the Apache were forced out the mountains to make way for silver mining. He was something of a patron saint of the town as his deep claims had paid for a rupees courthouse, a saloon, and the education of his only son, Tom. <laughs> Ain't you gonna plug him for what he done? What he did? What did he do? Little red bastard, give me this. Sure, and you want to stick to that story? Poor little squirrel couldn't kick his own ass. Reckon them gals up there is the one that gave you that bruise. Perhaps he felt guilty about all that Apache blood staining the silver he took out of them hills. Or maybe he was just trying to get a rise out of his ornery son. Are you Apache or Yaki? You understand me, don't you? Yes. Well, what's your name, son? Hank Hayes made a decision. And with that, Tommy had himself a new brother. over here. Hell, it's that around your neck. Get in here. Josephine! Joe, come back here! Kindred spirits and youthful possibilities fuel the untarnished heart of a child. 
the journey to adulthood rides saddled with the sting of reality. And by the time Joe Cassidy had been poisoned by her father's prejudice and her mother's opportunism, she had forgotten all about her fellow outcast and landed in the arms of his brother, the better prospect. Jake, look after my fiance now. She's the most valuable thing on this ranch. How long you reckon you'll be? She'll be more than a few weeks. Bisbee, Tucson, Phoenix. Collect on the old man's claim, so. I'm sorry, Tom. Your father was good to me. Well, let's hope he's good to us from beyond the grave. I've got a feeling it's gonna cost me a fortune to buy that woman a new family tree. What are you talking about? Well, I can't very well have the whole territory knowing who my wife's parents really are. It's a scandal we're gonna bury under sand and gold. If it's what she wants. <laughs> Look after the ranch, little brother. Jake. Things aren't exactly the same as I left them when I get back. You and I are gonna have words. What the hell are you doing out here pointing rifles at cans? You're gonna get black powder all over that frock, you know. I'll spray powder all over that red smirking. You should be thanking me, Joe Cassidy. You're far too dignified a specimen to be presenting cans in public. I wonder they pay good money to pick your people off this land. Oh. Your dad took that job very seriously. Man's for pleasure in his work. You don't know nothing about my daddy. You're probably right. But just think. Tommy's daddy hadn't paid so much good money to your daddy. Use this thing on my daddy. Be missing out on the pleasure of my company right now. Is that story supposed to make me feel sorry for you? I don't need your pity, Mrs. Hayes. It ain't Mrs. Hayes yet. Pardon me, Miss Cassidy. I won't make that mistake again. I promise. Ain't a little late to be doing a rain dance? Can't get the goddamn nail driven in unless I get my face underneath the goddamn hole. Do I have to get up on the ladder and do it for you? I wouldn't want you to rip your corset. <sighs> oh, don't you dare hit me with that thing. Thank you. You know, this would be a lot easier to do from on top of the roof. It's raining on top of the roof. Give me that. 
And it won't be too long before you start complaining about being hungry. Big black son of a bitch who keeps circling the same spot over and over again. That one. We call that one Angel who draws salt from the earth. Really? No. You ass. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you assume I know what every bird, snake, and rodent is called? I don't know. Don't your people have some sacred bond with the land, the sky, and every animal in the sea? My people. We were born here too, you know. I spent a hell of a lot more time with your people than my own. You really don't know what that thing is? Of course not. That's why I asked. Turkey vulture. What, do you pick or something? What the hell with you? Hell with you. <laughs> What's he circling? Food. I know that. What kind? Hell if I know. Some that ain't dead yet. You remember when I pulled a gun on Tom for you? What? We were kids. Tom was beating you senseless, and I got the drop on him. Reckon you're confusing his dreams from memories. Yeah, I do that sometimes. You comfortable in that? How do you mean? Soaked in sweat twice through, and your hands are swollen from those frilly manacles. That dress make you happy? He gave it to me. Looks like it's dinner time. his house empty and his bed cold. Tom Hayes made such haste riding home from Bisbee that he's rewarded with the kind of welcome that no man ever recovers from. How did they meet? She's a pro, he's a customer. It ain't hard to make friends on the second floor of the Bellevue. Does he still visit her? Once a week, every week, for the last 20 years. 
Well, there were rumors that when Tom Hayes realized his fiance was fixing to leave him for his adopted brother, that he used his daddy's fortune to buy himself a badge. Who'd vote for a monster like that? Well, the mines had dried up. The railroad hadn't passed through here yet. Tom Hayes was the only person in town with any seed. And he planted it in all the right pockets. Why didn't people just leave? A lot of them did. Before Hank Hayes passed on, this town was fixing to be another busy. Plenty of farms, homesteaders, ranches, promise. But when his son became sheriff, this palatial establishment we were currently residing in, as well as Harley O'Hoolahan's pleasure parlor upstairs, became the center of this town. And the only profitable business left in it. When the engagement was called off, rumors began to swirl as to why Tom Hayes hadn't just gunned down his fiance and brother. But he never threatened the lovers, nor involved himself in their affairs. Instead, he took up residence in the Bellevue. Using his father's money and political influence, he set about rewriting the rule of law in Ruby. Still, Joe and Jacob behaved cautiously around Tom at all times. Uneasy about the new sheriff's intentions, they made quiet preparations for their escape. But shortly after Tom had taken control of the saloon, Harley's consumption reared up with a fierce vengeance. So at Rowena's pleading, Joe decided she couldn't leave her mother to die alone in a brothel. so separately. Worried they might be spotted by Hayes or his deputies, Joe left first and Jacob stayed behind to collect on his poker money. Once he had the money, he would ride out to meet her and they would head west together. That was the plan. Tom Hayes could have killed the lovers and that would have been the end of this here story. But in the glow of that campfire, he decided death was too good for him. He wanted them to hurt the way he had hurt. And the best way to hurt a person ain't to hurt that person. It's to hurt the person they love. How did he do it? You shot him. In the street? Harley's room. Did you see it? 
I didn't have to. Then how do you know? He's dead, Joe. I'm going back to Ruby. You can't do that. They'll be on you the moment you set foot onto Main Street. There's no place in that town he doesn't have eyes. If you go back to Ruby and get yourself shot, then what did he die for? What did he die for? If he were still alive, he'd beg you not to do anything foolish. He'd want you to stay away. Take that little whore's advice to heart, Josephine. Mama was a whore. Yeah, she'd be the first to admit that. Is that how you see them? Whores first and women second? Just the judgment of a whore over just about anyone. You trusted Harley? I think she loved you. Why are you so concerned with your mom and I? loved each other. Because she's dead, Court. I thought you should know there won't be a warm body in a bottle waiting for you above the bell anymore. Your mama, she... Don't hurt yourself, Court. <laughs> Maybe you can get together with all of Harley's regulars. Who knows how many brothers and sisters I've scattered all over the territory. I'll pluck your eyebrows off. You don't watch your mouth about your mama. Harley O was the decentest woman I if ever had. If you loved her so much, then how come you didn't take her away from this life? I told her every time I saw her that I loved her. She never came to see you? Sent that Rowena out here to deliver a few letters. You and I have both had someone taken from us. You can't hunt down consumption, but I can put a bullet in the heart of that seed sucker who killed Jake and made a slave out of Harley. Oh, good. You just leave me out of it. You're too busy pining for a whore. You can't even shoot straight. I shoot just fine, young lady, but stomping into a suicide mission avenge some Apache bastard that gives you the vapors? This ain't the way I planned on ending my life. Are you sure you want your last words in this world to be a slur about a man who died today? As far as I'm concerned, that Apache bastard is the only family I got. Well, you got every right to go and seek your revenge. But I don't owe him nothing. I thought there was a good man buried inside that poisonous husk. You may have me confused with someone else. You may have thought that Apache was the only family you ever had. By God, now I'm really the only family you got left. I'm going to Ruby to kill Hayes. With or without your help. Well, you're gonna see your mom again. A lot sooner than I will. already plugged you twice in the time it took you to aim your first shot. I thought you said you didn't want any part of this. I don't. Don't mean I'm adverse to entertain. What six cents of humor some bitch taught you how to shoot? Hell, maybe some people just can't be taught. For supper, I suggest you using a hatchet. You smoke them hands with a bullet, the meat just ends up tasting of antimony. You ever do any actual ranching? Spread's about as useful for ranching as a cactus is for a saddle. Well, then how'd you pay for all this? It's a 
the killing still pays well. Pays a hell of a lot better than conspiring. Unarmed Navajo, Apache, Chinese women and children, they deserve it? You'll forgive me if the judgment of a petulant child smacks of hypocrisy. And you think killing Hayseed Hay is gonna give you that satisfaction? I'll let you know. What are you closing one eye for? Close one eye, you're just gonna see half as much. Plus, you're just gonna end up spraying wide because you ain't got no depth perception. I know you think I'm an ancient, bigoted, drunken fool. And you're not wrong. But tell me, Lady Vengeance, how is it that someone twice your age and twice as drunk as you can get three dead-eye shots off in the time it takes you to get one? Because you've been practicing your whole life? Wrong. Because you're so drunk, you're not even trying to aim? That's close. I ain't got time for the ramblings of a lonely, pickled reptile. So busy looking that you ain't seeing. For every second you spend crossing your eyes at your target, you lose two split seconds you could have spent fire. Tell me how, Court. Tell me how to shoot like you. Look, I ain't never asked for anything, and you ain't never given me anything. I gave you my name. You gave me something I can use, Daddy. Give me something I can use to defend myself. You don't want to defend yourself. You want to take a man's life. Josephine, now your hand is on its way from wherever it was to point directly at your target. A weapon is just something that happens to pick up along the way. The holster is talking you the gun as your hand rides by it. Gun matches the speed of your hand and joins it. Go then. What was that? I shattered the son of a bitch. No, you didn't. I did. No, you did not. You took three to the chest before you even had a chance to fire your first shot. Go. Go again. Why is your hand shaking like a punch drunk pugilist? There ain't no blood left in it. Tell your veins to pump the blood where it's needed. You in charge of your hand, or in in charge of you? That answers that question. Better. I missed. Yeah, your eyes don't aim, your arm aims. When you blink, does your weapon discharge? No. What discharges your weapon? My hand. Your arm. Hand is an extension of your arm. Finger's an extension of your hand. All right. Your arm aims the gun, your finger pulls the trigger. Now, they do the work, so they make the rules. All right. The eyes don't even hardly factor in. All right. All right, man. What are you doing, Cass? Don't call me that. Why not? He calls me that. Who? You know who. You hate that crooked son of a bitch in badge polisher? Yes. You want to put two between them blank, beady eyes of his? Yes. You want him to answer for Jacob? Yes. Dry a coat! Better. You all right? What does it look like? Looks like you haven't slept. What's it do to you? Are we gonna go shooting or you wanna get into bed? I want you to leave me alone. <laughs> no, I thought you were gonna help me. Help you do what? Help you get yourself killed? I'm not like Harley Court. I'm like you. <laughs> Never wanted to believe it, but I can't deny it any longer. So what? So you're the best shot I've ever seen. And if you can make me half the shot you are, I'll be twice the shot Hayes is. So I shouldn't so have you a problem. What? Why don't you put that bottle down and come with me back to Ruby? Aren't you listening to me, girl?
Why? Because you were safe. You'd gotten away. You should have stayed there. You couldn't bear the thought that he won, could you? So whether he shot you yesterday or hung you tomorrow, I should just let him get away with it? The hell with him. I'm lucky to trust you look after yourself. The hell with you, too. I leave you alone for five minutes and you get your skinny ass caught. Nobody asked you to come back here. If I hadn't come back here, you'd have a noose around your neck by now. I can take care of myself. Clearly. Bump off haste, then what, huh? You shoot your way out? I didn't care what happened after I killed him. Joel, you have to be smarter than that. No, I don't, Jake. No, I don't. You're the smart one. You've always been the smart one. And I thought you were dead, so I didn't give a damn if they plugged me the minute I left that room. Harley's room. Hell, it's where she died, after all. Worst place is to take my last breath. <laughs> he ain't never gonna leave us alone, is he? Not as long as we're both still alive. I have. Didn't care for it much. They didn't let you bring your piano in with you. If memory serves, my jailbird days preceded my ivory pickling days. No, you didn't play piano as a child. <laughs> now, there weren't a lot of pianos where I come from. Where's that? Not too far from here. This town is like a whale. Anything gets too close and it ends up falling in and never climbing out. And that's why smart people keep to distance. Even if they're dying of thirst. Why haven't you left? What? What's keeping you here? You got family. Family? No. You hop tied to this piano. Getting a lot of satisfaction out of serenading drunken lowlifes on their way to Nogales? Ask me another question. What made her believe Jake was dead in the first place? She made a mistake. And what was that? She trusted someone. Holster and a rejoinder. Hard breather. You don't have to do this, Tom. Let her go. She's innocent. Innocent, says you. You realize this woman started her evening by pointing a gun at the publicly elected lawman of this municipality. Who exactly elected you? And the penalty for attempted murder of the sheriff in Hatchetilla County is death by hanging. And what's his crime? Just keep me here and let him go. Tell you what, why don't we make this easy on ourselves?
two bullets. Two bullets to change your world. The way I figure it, you can pick up that gun, shoot the other one, shoot yourself, and then the two of you can shuffle off in a blaze of glory, all Romeo and Juliet fashion. Or you could pick up that gun, shoot me, shoot the other one, and then toss the gun back in my lifeless body and convince whoever comes through that door in the morning that I was consumed by a fit of homicidal, suicidal jealousy. Or I could just shoot you twice in the head and not get a shit what anyone thinks. It is going to be hard to convince anyone that I got two in my own head before I went down. Cass. Don't call me that. <laughs> then, when they find out who was responsible in the morning, you're both gonna swing anyway. Maybe just one in the head, and Jake and I make your suicide sound real convincing. I dropped four rounds at my feet, popped myself with a fifth, and then left a live one in the barrel. There is not a deputy in this town that's gonna believe I was drunk enough for that. Sorry, Cass. Joe, don't! Come on, Cass! Come on! Put us all out of our misery. Make Papa Court proud. Joe! You see that? I just told her you were gonna get your neck stretched in the morning. And she still couldn't help but use those precious imaginary bullets on me. This woman loves you, Jacob. And you may be right. But I can goddamn well guarantee you she ain't got the necessary faculties to love your ass half as much as she hates mine. She truly is her father's daughter. I guess the main question of the evening is, which one of you gets to go first in the morning? Because the second one gets to watch. It's a big night for him. Getting to watch us suffer. That man suffered because of us, Josephine. He ain't a man. He's a boy, always been a boy. He didn't deserve what we did to him. He hasn't recovered. We may have cost him pain. The difference is we never took any joy in it. Daddy had a saying. Your open door might invite the bad, but uh, closed door rejects any possibility of the good. It's all right to get angry, Jake. I reckon you got enough anger inside you for both of us, Joe Cassidy. I'd rather spend my last night on Earth with. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. Did I wake you up? I didn't mean to frighten you. I brought some hooch, but it looks like you started without me. It's all right. As long as you're not too drunk to rub my tired feet. Sheriff Hayes sent me. 
got me up out of bed, said his best man was stuck in here all night, cold and bored, doing his job, guarding the condemned and all, said, I ought to come and keep you company, said I was to do whatever you asked, whatever you wanted, for as long as you wanted, and I said, yes, sir, sheriff, sir. Did I do wrong? <laughs> You're not going to send me all the way back up to the bell before sunrise, are you? <laughs> That's what I thought. Don't be greedy. We ain't got enough blankets to carry the whole goddamn arsenal. Where are we gonna stash them? Do I have to do everything for you two? Use your imagination. And don't forget them cartridges. Those are 30-30 Remington shells, genius. That's a Winchester. It's a 44 caliber rifle. Okay, then. Hand me that satchel. Problem, don't she? Well, maybe I just spring him. And I leave your ass for Hayes to string up. Rowena, listen to me. Why should I ever trust you again? You're the reason we're in here. I made a mistake now. I'm trying to make it right. You told me Jake was dead. You told me he was dead! You left me out there believing he was dead this whole time, and then you helped Hayes trap me. Joe Bones! Why shouldn't I just wash these bars with your brain? Joe! <laughs> you helped that son of a bitch, and now we're in here. And why should I believe? My fault! You lied to me. You lied to me? He promised me. Promised you what? That he'd let me go? He promised me that if I helped him lure you back, he'd let Jake go. Go, you that maybe if he knew I was the reason someday he might look at me the way he's always looked at you Sweet little Rowena. Shame to see her go just when I was beginning to trust her. But aiding in a jailbreak is punishable by death. That's just law of the land, I'm afraid. You found me, Cass. Shedding tears for that little turncoat who was more than happy to trade your life for a chance to dig her claws into your rescue. I'm gonna kill you. You are in no position to be making threats, my old friend. Maybe I'll just string that noose up right about here. I wish you would. I really do. And that is exactly why I won't. Atchitoa County Municipal Code expressly forbids public executions before 7 a.m. on the Lord's Day. I ought to know. I wrote the law myself. Look out that window. You should be able to see the sun hit them gallows at 7.01. Enjoy the show.
you're not looking your best, Josephine. But I guess you proved me wrong. <gasps> you're still alive. Well, thanks to you. I am sorry, darling. I will just about all the apologies I can handle for one morning. Think you can knock Hayes off the gallows with ease? Before he has a chance to string up your boy? If you can keep those bastard deputies off me. I don't think you're gonna be exchanging no gunfire wearing that frock. members of the Cassidy clan. Why don't you just let him go, Tom? Three episodes right out of here, never see us again. Not a very strong bargaining chip, Court. What makes you think I'd ever let this one get away again? You have any idea how many guns are on you right now? You got any idea how many eyes are on you right now? I own them eyes. That boy may be an arrogant, ornery troublemaker. That don't make him a criminal. You really gonna execute an innocent man in front of all creation? Who's gonna stop me, Court? You? Your daughter? Them whores? You ain't gonna do a goddamn thing. You're gonna stand there and watch me hang this backstabbing, freeloading homewrecker. Then you are gonna turn tail on Harley's child and run to your dusty bottle back in the desert. Drop that door, Mars. He killed Rowena. She was unarmed and alone, and he shot her in the back like the coward son bitch he is. Are you really gonna spend your lives giving half your nut to a murderer just because he has a badge bought and paid for? When are you gonna say enough is enough? Yes. 
do. Listen to me. Y'all can ride out of here. I promise not to follow you. I mean it. Just get on out of here. Kill an unarmed man. If loving you is punishable by death, I'm gonna go with the green country. I love you, Joe Cassidy. I'll see you in <laughs> Dare do this to me again. I thought you were dead. No, please. And this, that was so much more painful than this. I can't do this without you. Yes, you can. For me, you can. Were you just trying to make a point, or is that story true? I'm afraid it's true. And a lady like yourself deserves the truth. I appreciate that, Cricket. It's gonna be awful cold in my room. I don't know where you plan on sleeping, but we could fight off that chill together. Now that's the finest offer I've had in many years, Q. And I'd be the luckiest man in the territory if I were to accept such a gift. But I ain't loved but one woman. And she's the only one I can imagine falling asleep next to. You think of her when you play all them melancholy love songs in here? Every single night. It's almost sunrise. I it get to be about that time. I ain't never seen a sunrise. <laughs> Well, that's, that's tragic. Why is that? Well, a sunrise is at least twice as beautiful as a sunset. Why? It's more magical, more symbolic, more deeply cleansing. To the sunrise. May she never take a day off. <sighs> you know, I'm pretty sure that train depot faces east. What are you saying, young lady? I'm saying that platform would be a mighty fine place to see the sunrise. Watch the steam from the dawn train getting closer by the minute. The gal is behind, Tucson ahead. 
Ain't nowhere but here, Q. You know, leaving this place don't mean you've left her behind. You forgot your little friend. Ain't my friend, and I don't plan on needing him. the offer, but I ain't never bought myself a train ticket before, and I'm kind of looking forward to it. Don't you dare get off that train till you spot some place out that window you ain't never seen before. You take care of yourself. I'm a tickler. 